For the final stop of our honeymoon road trip, we left New Hampshire and made the drive to upstate New York. We decided to stay in Woodstock, New York for a few different reasons. We wanted to add another state to our New England road trip and neither of us have really explored upstate New York very much. We thought that Woodstock sounded interesting and it was the weekend, so it was very hard for me to book anything, especially because this trip was put together a little bit last minute. But we finally found something. We are in Woodstock, New York, and this is our campsite for the last two nights of our trip. It was, it was really tricky. Today's Friday night, tomorrow Saturday night, so those are our last two nights, and those are always the hardest to book, especially in the summer especially because I waited kind of last minute to book the trip. So what we ended up having to do was use the website Hip Camp to find a spot because all the state parks and every other thing that I usually use was booked. So it was the first time using Hip Camp, which is basically where you can camp on someone's property. So this is a, a really pretty property ton of bird noises and nature noises. Um, so a nice little camp spot. It's a little close to the road. The road is right there. It's not a real busy road, but definitely some cars going by here and there. Um, it's supposed to be good weather though the next two nights, so hopefully the stargazer will actually do its job and we'll get to see some good stars tonight. So don't let the way to the world slow you down Search for the meaning of life, it won't be found. So take your insecurities and leave them all behind. Let's learn to make the most of our time. It had been another long day in the car, which is not our favorite. We got our campsite set up and I started to cook some dinner. One of the things that I noticed immediately about this particular campsite was the abundance of wildlife sounds. Birds, deer, everything. We got to feel very deeply immersed in nature, even though we were so close to a pretty major town. This was our first time using Hip Camp to book a campsite, and it was an interesting experience. I was actually surprised how many unique locations they had to camp. With Hip Camp, it allows people with private property that have some sort of a unique element to offer space to campers. And it can be anything from a kind of rustic, no frills campsite, which is what we are at right now, all the way up to glamping sites that people set up for you. So lots of variety and some very interesting properties. It gives you such a different experience in an area compared to staying in a campground or staying at a state park. And since those were all full, this was our only option left, but we were glad to give this a try. We heard a very strange sound out in the forest and then realized that it was a mother deer trying to find her fawn and they ran right through our campsite. This place really was full of wildlife. Now, one of the downsides was that just behind the trees was the owner's house. So we were secluded, but not as secluded as I probably would have liked. And on the other side was the road. 
and it's not a super busy road, but busy enough that there were cars going by from time to time. And Patrick and I have done our fair share of camping, so we are no strangers to going to the bathroom in the woods, but given that we were situated between a house and a road, it made it a little bit tricky and awkward. Patrick set up our extra green tarp as a bit of a privacy shade. And then we just sat there and enjoyed all of the wildlife sounds that came out as the sun went down. <laughs> there were so many birds and as it got dark we got to hear the bullfrogs that were in the pond and all sorts of other insects and creatures in the woods. We even woke up in the middle of the night and we could hear a pack of coyotes howling and barking in the distance. It's a, a very interesting sound when the only thing separating you from the wildlife is a thin piece of material that makes up your tent. We woke up to a sunny, beautiful day and a whole bunch of different bird and insect sounds. We started to get ready for the day by getting dressed and making some breakfast and I'm sure that I was saying something quite interesting <laughs> over this video clip, but the night before Patrick and I were playing with the settings on the camera and I totally forgot to switch the settings from slow motion back to regular video. So, little did I know, we were walking around downtown Woodstock for many hours, filming all sorts of footage, and it took me until we were just about to leave to realize that the camera was in slow motion. So, we don't have any audio on these clips, but I will do my best to explain what was happening, and we will at least get to walk around and explore downtown Woodstock so you can get a little bit of a feel for what this area is like. In my normal day-to-day -day life, I usually look forward to Saturdays as a day off work and a day to do something fun. But when we are traveling, I don't really like Saturdays as much because you know you're going to be fighting through some busy crowds. And that was definitely the experience that we had here at Woodstock. So we try not to film people directly when we're walking around, but just keep in mind that we were here on a Saturday and we fought through traffic to find a place to park, which took us quite a while as well. There were a lot of people walking around the streets in most of the areas, so not our favorite thing when we visit somewhere and it's super crowded. We prefer to be away in the woods somewhere a little bit quieter, but for the sake of experiencing this very famous town, we decided to come here for our last weekend and see what it was all about. We eventually found parking off the main area by the Woodstock Cemetery. And then we walked to the main street and just started to wander around aimlessly without a particular plan. The main road is lined on both sides with all sorts of shops and restaurants, 
lots and lots of tie-dye everywhere and we came across this place that had apparently won an award for having the best cupcakes so we figured we had to try them we were rather shocked at how small the cupcakes were these two miniature sized cupcakes came out to $13 so we were a little bit sticker shocked by that um, yes we are in a touristy area and that just comes with it but when we had the cupcakes we were kind of like eh, they were okay they were not anything special we've definitely had better baked goods before so a little disappointed in that but that's how it goes sometimes we were doing things a little bit backwards as we sometimes do we had dessert and then we decided to get some actual food and we got these meatball sandwiches and again they were quite expensive and they were just sort of okay so at this point we were a little bit disappointed but this is when I realized that the camera was on slow motion and I fixed it It was about this time that something we call travel fatigue started to set in. When we're on a longer trip, there's a certain point where you just sort of feel like you hit the wall. And we had struggled through traffic, fought to find parking, eaten some overpriced food that was definitely not worth it, and we were sort of done with the whole situation. So we walked back toward the car, and you know I love a good cemetery, so I spent a couple minutes in the very quiet, calm Woodstock Cemetery with some beautiful gravestones, and this was actually my favorite part of exploring Woodstock. The quiet of the cemetery was definitely more our speed at this point. But Patrick and I looked at each other and we both kind of decided that maybe it was time to pack up and head home. We're doing something today that we left on Garden State Parkway. I don't think we've ever done on a trip and that's a, we're heading home a day early. We were walking around Woodstock today and um, you know kind of seeing all the, the major areas and there's a lot to do in the area, but I feel like we were just miles hitting that point of just being a little bit fatigued because we've been doing so much driving. We were really trying to fit a lot into a short period of time on this trip, and we don't love being in the car a lot. It was sort of just the, the necessity to fit what we wanted to do into the number of days that we had off work. So we did have to do some longer travel days, and I feel like that kind of took a toll on us. And when you start to get that tired, you're just not enjoying the, the sightseeing process. And then the other thing was that we really missed the dog. And we knew that that was going to be like a hard thing on this trip. But then today when we were walking around Woodstock, there were just like dogs everywhere. It was to the point where we were just like, oh, there's a dog, there's a dog, there's a dog. And we were like, oh man, we really miss Redford. So it's hard traveling without the dog because we do miss him a lot it's just it's just a fun dog 5.8 miles on garden state parkway expressway lane and i feel like there's a lot of things that we like to do that are not necessarily dog friendly a lot of places you just can't stay with a dog so it makes travel really tricky so a lot of times we end up leaving red with patrick's parents which he enjoys he loves going over there but we still go through that process of like missing the dog and looking at pictures of the dog and thinking how many days it is until we get to go see Redford again. So um, I think it was also a little bit tricky with the campsite that we had last night. Great location, very close to downtown Woodstock. And it was a, a nice area because we were right next to that pond. So there was just like a ton of wildlife and nature sounds, but the bathroom situation was a little tricky. There wasn't a bathroom. We were kind of sandwiched in between the road and the house, which made it tricky. Um, yeah. So that just kind of made it slightly uncomfortable. So we were trying to have to like be creative with that. So when we were walking around downtown Woodstock and we were both just kind of 
not feeling it, we thought maybe we should just head home tonight instead of leaving in the morning. So here we are heading home, um, ending off this trip, and then we'll just have a little bit more reset time tomorrow to, uh, to get ready, do the mountain of laundry that we have behind us, and um, just kind of get ready to go back to work. So, then we'll start planning our next trip, which is usually what we do immediately after we finish a trip. Let's plan another trip. So the next big trip will be Ireland in November. Thank you so much for joining us on this very special and somewhat unusual honeymoon road trip through New England. I'm so glad that we were able to share this experience with you. Make sure that you are subscribed so that you get to see when our next video series starts. We have a few exciting trips coming up. We did a trip to Vermont in the fall, and that was a wonderful trip, our first Amtrak train trip. We are going to Florida to explore the northern part of the state, and then we are off on the Finnegan family trip to Ireland. So you know that's going to be a fun one. We'll see you in the next one. Well, you worried about you and me, the injustice, the next president to be, the news and watch here your career. It's time for you to face those fears, and it's all fair. To be aware and I'll be there, so don't be scared. Just take a deep breath of air. And one, two, three to ten, you begin to focus again. And though time flies, we have enough to realize this bigger than the both of us.